Hello, I'm Nick Markey. This is the Beach Barbell Podcast and Videocast. Going to talk a little bit about pain and uh, how the nervous system works in a little bit more detail today. So, the nervous system, to keep it simple, uh, involves neurons. Neurons are the cells of the nervous system. They're they're small, and they connect end to end, and they connect can connect to multiple neurons. So, a nerve would be hundreds, thousands of those neuron cells wrapped up in a tube, okay? Your sensory nervous system delivers information from your body, so like your knee, up through your spinal cord, and then eventually into your brain. So how pain works is that sometimes this information will trigger something, maybe in the brain, to decide that you should feel pain. Um, think of pain as your brain's alarm, threat system. It's trying to make you pay attention to something, whatever that, whatever that is. So brief overview of the sensory system. You have the initial neurons that connect into things like um, your muscles, your ligaments, your tendons, your skin, in the joints, certain areas. And then those neurons go up to the spinal cord, and then they interact at a few different levels in the spinal cord, and then they connect to another neuron that then goes up the spinal cord into the middle of the brain, center of the brain, an area called the thalamus. Then that area, it's sort of a relay center, fans it out to whatever else needs to uh, hear this information. So you basically have three chains, one connecting to the knee, then connecting into the spinal cords. So that's chain two, spinal cord up into the center of the brain, and then connecting from the center of the brain out to the sensory centers or whatever other centers need to hear this information. So pain doesn't exist until the brain decides it to be, okay? So a simple example could be a little kid is climbing on monkey bars, falls down, maybe breaks his wrist. He's holding it tight, protecting it. They go to the doctor. They do an x-ray. It's broken. We need a cast. They put on a cast. Maybe the kid picks green because that's his favorite color. And within a few minutes, that kid is running around like nothing happened, probably chasing people with his cast. So he felt pain because you know he had something, a threat, that his brain was getting information about. So there were neuron signals going danger, 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 and then getting into the spinal cord, danger, danger, and then eventually into the thalamus, danger, danger, danger. Kids probably experiencing pain. They put the cast on, right? We've addressed the threat. We've dealt with the situation. Now the brain, the, the, the defense system, the pain system, may not find it necessary to have pain. So he's still got a broken bone. There's still danger signals going, down the, going up the chains. But once they get up to here, the system says, you know what? We get it. We've taken care of the situation. Another simpler situation could be you get a cut on your arm. You know, you feel something stinging on your arm, you look at it, oh, I got a little cut there. So maybe you clean it off, put a Band-Aid on it. Usually you don't feel that cut again unless you start really messing with it. So again, you still have danger, danger, healing, danger, but you've taken care of it. So there are also other situations where people maybe don't have a, an area like something called a phantom limb pain. So somebody that's had an amputation doesn't have a foot or toes anymore, but they can oftentimes get what's called phantom limb pain, where they feel pain in that foot that they don't that doesn't even exist anymore. So, why does that happen? You know, are there signals coming from the neurons that are left and then up into the body and saying danger? Perhaps. Is there other things going on? You know, especially since when they feel the pain, they don't feel it in the remaining limb. They feel it actually in air where the toes would be if there were toes. So kind of a weird situation. So you know, perhaps the brain not getting the regular information that it used to is sort of freaking out. 
and making you check on what's going on with our foot. I'm not getting information from the foot. Check it. Please check it. Check it. So that is in a situation where, you know, there technically isn't damage because there's nothing there, but someone is feeling pain. Uh, and then there's also issues where people have something called diabetic, diabetic neuropathy, and that's where the neurons in the foot, maybe the hands, uh, they don't work as well or work at all, and so you don't feel anything. So you're not getting those danger signals. And so oftentimes they won't feel anything in that foot. They're not, they don't have the signals coming from those neurons anymore. Um, and so they have to be very careful and check their feet often, make sure they don't have an injury or some sort of uh, wound or something that's not healing because then that can turn into a situation where they might need an amputation. So lots of little weird scenarios on all ends of the spectrum. And ultimately, if you look at pain not so much as damage, but look at it as more of threat, it makes a whole lot more sense. It makes more sense when you have a stressful situation and suddenly you're, you're getting all this pain in your neck and your shoulders. Well, that doesn't mean there's damage in your neck and your shoulders, but there's some sort of threat. You know, sometimes when people have long standing pain in an area, maybe like their back, when they start thinking about doing things with their back, like picking something up, or they even watch somebody pick something up, sometimes they'll start to feel it in their back. You know, their, their, their system is sort of running through some sort of threat, you know, the alarm system going off. So, what does this mean in practical sense for just this, uh, somebody that's maybe struggling with pain? So let's just start with the initial pain. So in most scenarios, if you, you get an injury, you probably feel some, something, some sort of pain. It can vary between the individual and it varies between you know, the, the situation that's, that that person's going through. So potentially the more supportive of a life and situation that person has, potentially the less pain they might feel. They might have feel less overall threat. Whereas on the flip side, someone has a far more stressful life, uh, a lot more things going on that are affecting them, they have perhaps a greater chance of maybe feeling more pain in this situation, more threat overall. But typically that beginning pain, what they call acute pain, will start high, kind of peak, and then gradually go down. And oftentimes it's kind of like this, like it'll be up and down as it overall is getting better and better. And then over weeks, months, sometimes years, it tapers off. Unfortunately, some people, you know, maybe 10, 20, 30% of people, that pain, it'll taper off and then it'll kind of stay up. Like it won't necessarily be going down. It'll probably be up and down. Sometimes it goes down and then months later comes back up so you're thinking, am I injured again, or what's going on? So it's like got flared up. That's the term people usually use. Um, and we wouldn't know, per se, that yes, this thing was re-injured. You know, that's usually the term that is used, re-injury. But it's hard to say, was the actual tissue, wherever you're feeling that pain, was it actually re-injured? Or for some reason, did the, did the neurons, the nerves that service that area all the way from the ones that are hooked into them at the, at the base, all the way up through the spinal cord into the brain, are somewhere in, those, in that area, are, are the neurons more sensitive? We don't know all the time that answer. So the practical application would be whatever that area is, you know, that you're feeling the pain, you, you want it to be more useful in your life. You probably want to feel better, but you also want it to be more useful. So you can look at two sides of the coin. You have just general function of that area and how well it feels, right? So the most optimal situation is function is high, pain is nothing or, you know, or very, very minimal, right? You know, another situation might be function is high, pain is about the same. You know, another one, function high, pain high, and any combination of that. So when you're trying to perhaps recover from this, if you consider pain f being damage, the problem with that is that you'll oftentimes feel a lot of threat from the pain, as opposed to taking a step back and looking at the pain as another variable 
within the situation. It is an important variable, and it's one you should pay attention to, but it's not the only thing. So how I usually will do it is let's start with easy stuff. You know, say that's the back. You know, someone has um, long-standing back pain. Let's start with easy stuff. You know, something maybe with the arms, something with maybe the legs, maybe something very light with the back. Let's just see how it reacts to that. Let's test that over the next, you know, over the session and then over the next day. If by the next day the person isn't feeling drastically more pain, I usually use the words tolerable or acceptable. So was what you experienced tolerable and or acceptable during and then as well as later on, you know, that night, the next day. If the answer was yes, then we'll try something a little bit more challenging with the back. So being very systematic, so doing, you know, almost, it's basically like an experiment. You try one variable, test that, see how it reacts. If it reacts okay, you know, whether pain goes down or at least at the, at the most stays the same, we don't want it, you know, tipping high for them, on, you know, because um, then that could mean we've irritated something that's already sensitive. Then what from there, if it's at least not worse, then you can, try to up the challenge or the function a little bit. And then over time, you know, the idea would be let's improve this function piece by piece while still managing wherever this pain goes. Now, yes, we would absolutely love it if that pain went way down, but we cannot ex expect that to happen. You know, it's really uncertain what it's gonna do because oftentimes it does this and oftentimes it'll do that regardless of what you do. You know, lots of patients and clients in my past have talked about how, yeah, I'll, I could do nothing and I can have more pain and then sometimes I'll do more things that I think would cause more pain, but they don't. It doesn't cause more pain. Sometimes the pain's better. So it's sort of random, which is tough because that really plays on your mind because you don't know where to predict it. But if you kind of focus on the function while monitoring how the pain reacts to what you're doing, over time, it'll hopefully look like this in terms of your function. It'll be up, gradually going up like that. And there will probably be setbacks, you know, two steps forward, three steps back sometimes. Um, but as long as you're focusing on that function while managing the pain experience, you're going to ideally have an improved quality of life because you'll be able to do more with your body and yourself. So. It's not an easy task, and oftentimes it's helpful to have somebody with you with that, whether it's some sort of therapist or a chiropractor, a friend, uh, a trainer, somebody that understands your situation and understands that taking it little by little, you know, kind of the experimentation systematic way is the best way in terms of whatever that area that's sensitive. I mean, if, if you only have one particular area that's sensitive and all the other parts are pretty good, well, then you could push the other areas, you know, probably more so, but that one particular area, whether it's your back or shoulder, neck, knees, whatever the area is, you know, you probably want to just be very gradual with that. I found that that oftentimes, you know, will, one, improve function because that's what you're focused on. Sometimes it will improve pain. Now, this isn't certain, and I never, ever promise this because I think you don't want to put up a, a, a promise there that then if it doesn't come true can sometimes scare somebody because then they feel like maybe they are damaged when that may very well not be the case. And then also notice that just general confidence in themselves and what they can do and what they can handle increases. Then they start oftentimes kind of experimenting with different things in their life, you know, different activities that maybe they weren't doing because of this problem and gradually reincorporating those activities that are probably something that they like to do, something enjoyable. And that's huge when you're thinking of just quality of life because um, ultimately that's, that's what, we're, what we're aiming for is improved quality of life, you know, enjoying the time that we get on this earth. So, well, I hope this um, thoughts are helpful. Uh, like I always do, I'll, I'll uh, post this with the uh, transcript and uh, I'll post it on the audio only as well for this podcast and video cast style that we're, we're doing with the Beach Barbell podcast now. Um, and then certainly reach out to me if uh, you have any 
uh, need for help or need to try to understand what's going on a little bit better, would love to talk to you and try to help you as best I can. So I hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening.